when I first started to develop in VR, one of the biggest hurdles that I had to overcome was just getting the hardware. A lot of people said that, well, you should build your own computer, but a computer is pretty difficult to take with you, although I have many, uh, many times. And a uh, laptop is either too weak um, or you're going to get a really bulky laptop in which you're going to pay a premium for. Uh, there are some other solutions like external GPUs. And today I'm going to show you how you can just get a MacBook or any other laptop of your choice for that matter to be able to develop in VR. of showing rather than telling, let's take a look. And so there you have it guys. I've got my Rift, obviously, you can see it, there it is, it's moving around. A uh, 2015 MacBook, nothing fancy here. In fact, I'm just using my trackpad. And I, well, I've got uh, three sensors actually. And then I've got my uh, tower here, which I uh, uh, built uh, for um, under uh, $1,000. And just so uh, that's, uh, you know, that's a definite way that you can use the hardware that you already have, a laptop, and if you, you know, obviously when you need something beefy, then you can uh, connect directly to a tower that you have. So this thing I built myself uh, following a guide uh, from Reddit on a PC Master Race. And, I, I, you know, I built computers before um, when I was like 15. So that and in those 15 years uh, since I built one, surprisingly, pretty much nothing has changed in terms of building one. You just kind of stick a bunch of parts together and uh, just make sure they're compatible and uh, that's it. Um, I, I, I did change it up somewhat. Um, so this is, I've got, a, um, I've got quite an uh, AMD heavy setup. I've got a Ryzen uh, processor and this is a Radeon 580 video card. Uh, a couple of uh, DDDR uh, RAM uh, sticks. Uh, I've got a couple platter drives here. They're eight terabytes each. I use them for uh, backing up over Wi-Fi. Um, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, this uh, this doesn't have, even have a Wi-Fi antenna. I just connect it directly to the router. And <laughs> even though this has actually seen some travel, um, for the most part, it only has what it needs. So it takes a village. Let's take a look at the actual ingredients that are making this work. Uh, the ingredients are just twofold. One of them is a uh, Microsoft Remote Desktop Client. Uh, this uh, comes for pretty much everything. Um, it comes for all Windows versions. Um, you can get it on the App Store uh, for the Mac. And um, setup is also extremely simple. On the Mac, you simply click this plus desktop and then you just type in the IP and I'll show you how to get that either. And then that's pretty much it. You can see that this is the IP on uh, the uh, local intranet for my computer. And this is a team viewer. Now you can use whatever you want. You can use, um, there's join.me, uh, there's um, Splashtop, uh, Real VNC. Um, I just found that uh, team viewer seems to be the most uh, resilient. So I'm using it for now, but you can use whatever you want. And if you've never used any of these before, it's dead simple. You download it on a server, which is the computer you want to connect to, and then you have a client, which is what we have here, the computer you want to connect from. Quick caveat, um, Windows Remote Desktop, uh, while all the clients can run on pretty much anything, the server um, only runs on Windows 10 Professional. 
um, caveat to the caveat, you can make this uh, um, work on a, a home as well. If you just, you know, type this in, you just Google it, um, then you'll be able to uh, get, uh, you know, get it working. Anyway, uh, let's go in. We've got uh, this here. Um, we've got uh, our uh, lovely uh, uh, interactions example um, by Steam VR in Unity, and then um, I've got some stuff here, and I've got Steam, and I don't have Steam VR running. And actually, even if we do try to get it to run, ah, even if we do try to get it to run, um, we are. Let's wait for it to break. Yeah, th there it is. It, it, so it's gonna throw errors at us. It, it just doesn't know what to do. And that's because we're connecting via remote desktop and it just won't do it via remote desktop. Now, the advantage of, of you know of, of running remote desktop is that it's really fast, especially if you're gonna be running it just over a router. Um, even, it, even doing things uh, just like typing stuff in, uh, there is no latency almost. And you can use an ID without uh, struggle. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna save that. Right. So we, we this is uh, you know this is a good setup for when we want to go in and get things to play in Steam. Now there is an option to uh, 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 to emulate the scene if we don't want to immediately run into VR. But if you do running, uh, if you do want to run it in VR, um, if you uh, want to see how your scene is going to look, then you're going to need to go into uh, into another uh, into an, another uh, way to connect. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to uh, click this here. This is I've got a, a green uh, indicator. I'm going to turn it red by clicking disconnect. It's going to kick me out. And now I have a team viewer set up that's going to connect uh, to my tower. I get a lovely black screen. This is actually the logon screen. And um, okay, and we're in. Um, anyway, you might get an actual screen. You might not. Um, sometimes it's uh, different for uh, uh, different for different software. Anyway, so I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna click play. And voila! I think we have hands. I'm just like waving this. Oh yeah, there, there we are. So we've got hands too. Um, yeah. So I mean, this is uh, uh, you know this is, this is great. Tons of lag. Um, if you're going to be using this, uh, don't use this to develop. Um, use this to preview. And I, and I think that if it's okay to do this and um, the latency is uh, negligible because you, the device itself, your Oculus uh, has no latency, it's directly connected to the machine, but your, uh, uh, your laptop, you're not going to be typing in on your laptop or looking at the console um, while, you are in, uh, while you are in VR, and you can always take a look at it later. Uh, so in, uh, I think uh, that is a, uh, I, don't, I don't think that's a deal breaker. And plus, as a, you know, as an advantage to this, you can also use it as a um, home server. So I've got, you know, I showed you the uh, the two hard drives that I had in there. So I've got a, uh, it's uh, backs everything, every single uh, computer I have in my apartment over Wi-Fi, and I can connect to and uh, just play movies on it with a projector. So having a setup like that is uh, is actually pretty sweet. And I, I've done different setups before. I've had uh, a really bulky computer uh, from uh, uh, that my uh, work gave me. I've used an eGPU with my laptop. And um, in this case, I kind of did maybe somewhat of a hybrid. So if you have any questions of setting something like that up, make sure to leave it in the comments. And then I will see you next time in base reality.